Hi, I'm Britt. And my name is Alyssa. And this is Skeletales. And this is the podcast where we strive to answer the age-old question of, is my dead grandma watching me? It's true. We tell true tales of the strange, unusual, and paranormal. Speaking of grandmas, my living, living grandmother. Okay. I saw her recently, went to Oklahoma to visit, and she told me a mind-boggling story. (gasps) Can I just... Grandma! (sighs) Yes! Hop, jump, skip right into this tale. I'm so thrilled. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Okay. The story begins with my Uncle John when he was about 10 years old. He was an adorable little kid, dark hair, face full of freckles, super energetic. One day, he made a friend in the neighborhood, and they played all day together and ended up at the friend's house around dinner time. John calls my grandma and says, hey, I'm going to spend the night over here. To which she says, um, I don't think so. I don't even know these people. Then John says, wait, Carol wants to talk to you. So she gets on the phone with Carol and finds out that the friend that John has made is also named John. Not that, but they have the same middle name, John Charles. Um, Their birthdays are just days apart. They live just a few blocks away and they go to the same church. So my grandma's like, okay, he can stay the night there. After that, the two Johns, so the friend John, they just call John John, and then my uncle John is just John. Um, They're just like brothers, thick as thieves, do absolutely everything together. So fast forward a couple of years, they're 12 years old. Uh, John John takes a job to mow the yard of a church member. Uh, And he was using a riding lawnmower when something went terribly wrong. The mower falls over, lands on John John, and kills him. Oh, my God. Everyone is absolutely devastated. And my Uncle John insists that him and my grandma go see Carol. And my grandma's like, I don't think so, John. Like, it just felt too hard for her. She doesn't want to go, but she ends up going to see Carol anyways for John. When they see Carol, my grandma says, I just, I just don't know how you're getting through this. I just couldn't even do it. Carol looks my grandma in the eye and says, don't say that, Barbara. You can never know that. A month later, my uncle John is riding his bike around the neighborhood when he is struck by a car and immediately sent to the hospital. While he's in the hospital, Carol comes to visit, and she goes into the room alone with John. When she comes out, she's sobbing. Her face is streaked with tears, and she says, I know that my John John was in there, and I told him, John John, you don't have to be with him all the time. A few days later, my Uncle John passed away. (gasps) They ended up burying John in the cemetery right next to his best friend, John Charles. So John Charles and John Charles right next to each other in a cemetery. Never knew this until I went to go visit my grandmother. Holy shit. Wait, this is your mom's brother? Yes. My Uncle John. He was 12 years old. Did you know about him? Did you know that he passed away? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. This is... I I just didn't tell you ahead of time for the shock value, but there's more. So fast forward to about five years ago, my grandpa, who was 92 at the time, was nearing his end of life. Um, Now, my grandpa Wayne is my grandma's second husband, but they married when I was a little kid. So he's just always been grandpa to me. And at this time, they had him in a hospital bed in the living room in the house. And grandma was caring for him day and night. And she said that he would regularly talk to people in the room around this time. And she'd say, who are you talking to? But never really got a clear answer and couldn't really understand like much of the conversations that he was having with these people. So one day while my aunt is visiting, he looks at her and he goes, who is that boy? And she looks around, there's no boy in the house. (laughs) She goes, what boy? (laughs) He goes, the one at the end of my bed. 
He's got dark hair and a face full of freckles. And my aunt looks at my grandma and they were like, oh, my God, it's John. And then shortly after that, my grandpa passed away. Holy so, shit. Wayne, my grandpa Wayne had never met John before. This right, was like right. from a whole other time. And who is that boy? He was there. Oh, my God. That is wild. So much. Your family has some like drama, trauma. Holy shit. I, I just thought, what are the chances that two boys both named John Charles, thick as thieves, like, it's such a strange coincidence. That is. And then everything they both about it. Die, die tragically at 12. At 12. Years old. Yes. That is so sh- It's very hard in this moment to separate your story from your mom and knowing your family. And I'm like, I know. Wait, what the fuck? Your mom's the brother died? When, how old was your mom? I was like three months old. Oh, no, maybe I was three years old. I was oh, a, so I was a alive. toddler. I was alive because my mom's the oldest and John was the youngest. So right. there's several years age difference between them. And okay, and actually, Wayne my is... brother Doug and John were very close in age. My oldest brother Doug and John were very close in age. Oh shit! Oh my gosh, that's so sad. Wait, but then Grandpa Wayne is he the one who also had another little Wayne, <laughs> a little Wayne and Deb? No, that's my grandpa, Carl. Oh, that story is wild. That is wild. The only thing that would have made it better, notes to grandma. <laughs> was I'll make sure to let her John, know. If John John showed up in the room along with John and there were two little boys covered with freckles. Guaranteed, guaranteed they're goofing around somewhere yes. in the whether it's heaven or some different realm those two are for sure together did john john's mom see john john in john's <laughs> she didn't room? she didn't she didn't tell my grandmother she just said i know he was there whether she saw him or felt him i don't know just but too much i mean that yeah. also sounds like some and like You're reliving a, your worst a month experience. earlier, a month earlier, her son had just died. So like, oh, so much, so much. Wow, but- that gives me goosebumps. My brother, my younger brother Adam, had a best friend named Adam growing up, but thankfully they both survived. They did both get bad mullets at one point, <laughs> um, one after the other, maybe a month apart. Hey, but mullets are coming back, not- baby. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly the tragedy that your parent, your family endured. Holy uh, smokes, grandma. But I just, I love the idea that John, I mean, and my grandma already knows. She's like, Wayne is with me. John is with me. Like, she has no doubt in her mind that they are like in her home hanging out with her. And I just, I love that because she's got that spiritualism kind of that I do too, in a sense where, and she even told me she was like, Brett, if I die, I'm going to come back. And I'll I'll say hi to you. And I was like, thanks, Grandma. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, I can't. I, I got I can confirmation wait. I can wait. from her. Like, I please wait. A, like yeah, a I'm long time. Say, I can't wait. <laughs> no, I love but, that though. And that, I love that. my girl. She's li- literally one of the my absolute. Maybe she might be my absolute favorite. Okay, I have children, so okay, one of my absolute favorite humans on this planet she's amazing but that's, yep that, good that story holy my story. Shit. that was Do a great you, story i did not can, see that coming can you follow up that family Fuck, tale Fuck, dude uh now I'm yeah like you can guess. i have yeah, a couple good ones okay i'll send i'll tell you the sadder one i guess before the less sad one <laughs> um <laughs> Only Wait, because- sad. Oh my gosh, we're bringing the sads tonight. <laughs> okay, so I found this story on reincarnationresearch.com. Mm. So this is actually an excerpt from a book called Children Who Have Lived Before. Okay, so there's a Ooh. doctor who is researching this child that was um, brought to him or he heard of. And so there, his name was uh, Eli Lash. And so he'll come up a couple times in here. Um, and so this is the story of a boy that was 
three years old when he told his parents that he was killed in a past lifetime by being struck on the head with an axe. From what the boy told the parents, as well as other relatives, it was thought the boy lived nearby in his past incarnation. His father, several relatives, and elders of the village decided to to visit neighboring communities to see if his past life identity could be established. Dr. Lash was invited to join this group as it was known that he was interested in reincarnation. When the group arrived to the closest neighboring village, the group asked the boy if he recognized this as location of his prior home. The boy told him that this was not his past life village. So the group walked to a second village where the boy again reported that this was not where he lived in his previous life. When the group reached a third village, the boy stated that this is where he had lived. The site How of his past the boy? three. Oh, little kid. Point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry he's little, little. So he was three years old. Let's see. Did any time? No, it looks like he started talking about it. Everyone's like, let's solve this case. Okay. <laughs> Get on it. out there, I guess. I don't <laughs> Detectives. know. Detectives. Um, so do, when the group reached a third village, the boy stated that this is where he had lived. The site of his past life neighborhood stimulated memories, and he was able to name several individuals from his past lifetime. At this point, the boy now remembered his own first and last name in this past incarnation, as well as the first and last name of his murderer. A member of this community who had heard the boy's story said that he had known the man the boy said that he was in the the past lifetime. This man had disappeared four years earlier and was <sighs> never found. It was assumed that this person must have come to some misfortune as it was known that individuals were killed or taken prisoner in the border areas between Israel and Syria where they were living for being suspected of being spies. The group went through the village and at one point the boy pointed out his past life house. Curious bystanders gathered around and suddenly the boy walked up to a man and called him by name. The man acknowledged that the boy correctly named him and the boy then said, I used to be your neighbor. We had a fight and you killed me with an axe. (gasps) Dr. Lash then observed that this man's face suddenly became white as a sheet. The three-year-old then stated, I even know where he buried my body. The boy then. The boy then led the group, which included the accused murderer, into fields that were located nearby. The boy stopped in front of a pile of stones and reported, He buried my body under these stones and the axe over there. Excavation at the spot under the stones revealed the skeleton of a man adult (gasps) wearing the clothes of a farmer and on the skull, a linear split in the skull was observed, which was consistent with an axed wound. Holy shit! Dr. Lash reported that at this point, everyone in the group stared at the accused murderer, who admitted in front of everyone that he did commit the crime. Next, the group went to the location where the boy stated the murder weapon was buried, and upon digging, the axe was found. Dr. Lash asked the group what would become of the murderer. He was told they would not turn him over to the police. Rather, they would impose a suitable punishment. What ultimately happened to the murderer was not reported. They killed him. They killed him. Oh, my God. um, What? Then the doctor reported that the subject of this case, this little boy, was born with a linear birthmark on his head, which appeared to be consistent with a linear defect in the skull found on his past life skeleton, which was appeared to be created by an axe blow. Whoa. I've heard this before with reincarnation stories about strange birthmarks being in places. Turns out their past life, they were shot in the place where the birthmark is. Or yes, yes, it has to make you wonder about like weird oddities on your, I mean, I don't know if you have have any oddities on your body of just like, is this weird mole (laughs) from? past life it is third nipple i have wondered how i got that no (laughs) my oddity not they're very normal it's a very normal thing never mind i shouldn't uh, um 
there's a fam- very famous case of like a couple whose daughters died and then they had new children after their daughters died and those new children – not new. That seems like they're, yeah. I don't, I, <laughs> they're new, I guess. I mean, not old. Like, they were very similar to the previous ones and would Ooh. favor the same toys and had um, birthmarks in the same spots or maybe where their injuries occurred. Like, there's a... Interesting. It's, I, we should do I, a whole episode on reincarnation as well. Okay, I'm, I'm writing it down. We love a good theme, and this is one we're both incredibly fascinated by. Yeah. And I don't um, know who this Dr. Lash is. The the book is not in English. This was translated. So um, Well, one one thing I've also heard about reincarnation is a lot of the times it's happening not very far from where the child is claiming to have used to live. Like the ones where they're driving in the car with their mom. Oh, I used to live there. It they're you know, yes. it's always within it a few miles from where they um their previous life existed that is really interesting there was um one of uh a listener lucy wrote in way back at the beginning of the when we first started and she was walking down the street i think she lived in england and her little mm-hmm. son started talking about how he used to live in the house down the road or something like Yes. That was the vibe of it. We could probably retell yes. the old stories because I don't. I don't remember. I don't know if anyone else. We should. We <laughs> should. That. They're but in the archives like now. So absolutely. Anyway, I love this. I'm infatuated with it. Yes. Murderers, beware! There may be some punk ass. You kids think you up got away with step. that? You think you got away with that shit? Uh 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 uh. Some people that are soul's coming back. That soul's coming back. And Three they will years hunt later, you down. I that little one can talk now. He said, "You did it. Yep. Here's the axe. Here's my bones. Boom." The Done. and the village people were like, "Oh, we got it. No prison for him." <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They're like, "Look, we already dug this hole. Perfect." Um. <laughs> so, coming soon to a Skeletales podcast streaming service near you. We will be doing, I think, some more reincarnation stories. Mm, I love it. Love to get someone on here who was reincarnated and remembers all of it. Does it hurt? I don't know much about reincarnation. I know there's like reincarnation can be complete as something I saw coming across that. I don't really even know what that means. It's not something I'm super familiar with. I just like these creepy kid stories. Have you like, heard oh. from friends where they were like, I think my kid might be my grandmother or my great grandmother or my uncle, like sister-in-law Brie thinks their daughter is her grandmother. She's like, oh, she has so many traits of my grandma Barb that she's like, I think it's her. That is so interesting. Yeah. I I mean, I've heard those sorts of things before. I don't know if I know anybody personally where we're all like, this is freaky, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. um, like if no. we, you know, cause you know, as humans, we all have our own like weird ticks of like watching somebody, if it's a little kid doing that person's body language to be like, oh my gosh. Or if, you know. Yeah. 100%. You see those things. And yeah, like I see it in my nieces and nephews and, you know, my kids too. Makes you know, you see those. it does. That's why we have this podcast. We're going to get to the bottom. Hell of yeah. Faith. We're solving okay. shit every day. Yeah, absolutely. Are you ready for my next story? I, I am ready. Because I've got good ones tonight, Alyssa. I'm so, I'm so excited. The first one, <laughs> I don't even know how you're going to top that, I man. Even, I don't even know. This one comes from Shannon. As a child growing up in Southside Chicago, I shared a bedroom with my younger brother. We had bunk beds and I slept on the top bunk. My little brother would talk to his quote unquote imaginary friend, Georgie, when playing yes. in our room alone, but I never thought much of it. We had a small desk in the room, the kind with the chair that's attached across from our bunks and against the far wall. One night, I awoke to a noise. It was common for my brother to fall out of his bunk and onto the floor. I looked over, (laughs) which I totally get. I looked over, and instead of my brother's sleeping body, I saw a shadow in the shape of a small child. The shadow was sitting at the chair-desk combo, 
and the shadow head turned towards me as I was leaning over the edge of the bunk bed. I covered my head and prayed and prayed and prayed that it would go away, and when I glanced back out, it was gone. A few days later, I peered over the edge of my bed, awoken again by a sound. I saw my brother half on and half off his bunk, sound asleep. I went to lay back down and saw this same shadow child crawling across the ceiling on the (gasps) far side of the room. Being on the top bunk and very close to the ceiling, I produced a short, small scream. The head of the shadow child turned toward me and started to crawl towards no. me. <laughs> Again, I covered my head and prayed and prayed for it to go away. I must have fallen back asleep as I don't remember peeking out later. He crawled now, in his mouth. <laughs> That's what he did. Now, my brother will tell you that Georgie was real and his friend. My older brother will tell you of feeling a presence in that house and of someone tapping him when he was studying late at night. The idea of a shadow child crawling on the ceiling towards you. Nightmares, nightmares, nightmares. No. Yeah. It reminds me of train spotting. If you haven't seen that, that's like what kind of, but, <gasps> and then like slowly turning. I thought you were going to say that you screamed at him or like made a screaming sound or something, but then rushed at him. I hate that. I hate this story. What's worse, rushing or slowly crawling? I don't know. But then is it part of his brother? Because he is his brother's imaginary friend or something, right? Is this Eli? Is that what you said his name was? Georgie. So close. Um, to Eli. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. Oh God! I so is don't that who know. he was seeing? Georgie's just crawling around the room like a creep, or because he believed in him and made him real? Like, oh God! I think Georgie's a ghost and a small child ghost living in the house, and was the brother's friend and taps the older brother on his shoulder late at night when he's studying. And I don't uh, like it. And mm-hmm. I don't like it one bit. I thought that the story Don't be so creepy, telling... Georgie. Yeah, Sorry. Georgie. Jeez. Also, uh, he didn't remember after the ghost like went at him, right? He's like, mm. I don't remember. I just woke up. He just fell about, back ha- asleep. Yeah. Like, what happened there? Um, you know I... what that reminds me of? So sorry to interrupt. Re- you told about the gin. Do you remember? Uh, yes. Yeah. A year and a half ago. And that happened where the person who was witnessing the gen kind of just blacked out and just like Don't woke remember. up in the morning and was like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have another real life mystery for you then. Okay. I today was on Facebook. I opened it up this morning and it had like passed on this date, right? Yeah, uh-huh. This happened. So uh-huh. one popped up from 2011 in De- no 2013 in Denver and my it I, my statement was I think I might have joined a cult <laughs> and I don't remember anything about that that was it that's what I posted out there to the no, world no other details I have no recollection no idea what the hell I was talking about and then I'm like man they brainwashed me good what I did make a comment about how I got all the free Kool Aid I wanted someone asked but like what in the world did I almost like what <laughs> We were high a lot in 2011. Let's just also be honest about that. <laughs> I did go to like a, one, a couple weird, well, one weird meeting where I was like, oh, yeah, what? this is not for me. This was what? some, it was, that was a little bit, but th- I remember that. And that was before I had kids. So this was 2013. This is after I had kids. Oh, this is after kids. Oh, so maybe I, I can't quite so high. for the life of remember me what, what cult I might have joined. Obviously. <laughs> I don't know. Is it I I do parenthood? Too weird. The cult of parenthood where you truly drink a lot of Kool-Aid because there's just children around all the time. If I'd been that, it was, the, it was a play date. That is... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I really don't remember. But uh, I'm not too concerned. But I thought I do think the fact that I have zero recollection of it. Yeah, that is Makes it a little more disturbing. Okay, so my next story, though comes from Judith. And Judith says, 
When I was about 28, I had two young kids and a husband when one night my dogs had a fight. I got a small bite and I was home alone with kids two and five and my husband was at work on the other side of the city. So I took my kids to stay with my neighbor friend while I went to the hospital to get the wound cleaned and got get a tetanus shot. Nothing tricky. Did all this, but at the hospital, I told the nurse who was doing the shot to take care as I sometimes fainted when I have deep intramuscular injections. She laughed and said it'd be fine. Anyway, needle went in. I felt myself fading. Then the next thing I knew, I was pulled up from my body by a silvery thread, which grew wide quickly so I could be inside it. I went up through the corner of the ceiling and through what looked like scary, restrictive dirt with tree roots in it. Passing through this, I came into a soft, calm darkness that felt empty and timeless. The thread kept pulling me forward and up into a lit energy formed tunnel within the blackness. As I moved through the tunnel, I remember being aware of what looked like pavers or cobbles beneath my feet and then realized I wasn't touching them, but flying above them. I became happy about this and went with the flow. Soon the light of the tunnel began to manifest into colored moving spheres of energy, moving up the sides of the tunnel to see me as I passed. When I slowed down, I'd been zipping along at lightning speed till now. On slowing down, I realized that the spheres were all different entities and I was conscious of sounds like music, but not quite, almost singing, but no words, almost like electric synthesized sound, but something like the wind instruments. Okay, now I was met by a lady dressed in gentle pale blue robes, not flashy, just calm, simple, and beautiful. She spoke to an older man by looking at him and sending thoughts to him. She took my hand and led me over to him. I looked at him and recognized him and was surprised at who it was, as I thought it should have been a family member or friend who greeted me, but instead it was this man. He was dressed in an ordinary darker set of trousery pants and some kind of jacket. He took my hand from the lady and we immediately set off towards a big stone entrance with a low stone wall running off eternally in either direction on each side of it. The wall was only about 35 centimeters tall, but was a clear barrier. He told me by thought that if we went through the gate, I couldn't come back. Still holding my right hand, we took off flying easily over the low wall, over the lovely grassy fields below. I was just so happy to see the lovely serene green fields stretching out as far as I could see. I remember we passed above a small pure river and flew towards hills. On the rise behind some distant hills, I could see a gold city in the distance. There was no sun, just everything had its own light within it. I remember wondering who lived in the city and if I would feel welcome there. I knew that I wasn't allowed to go there, and at this point we stopped and turned back and flew back to the gateway. This time we landed on a great big flagstone about two meters across and three meters wide, the width of of the entranceway. We landed on the outside of the entrance. I was made to understand that I needed to take care not to step beyond the boundary or I could not come back. While I stood there, I was shown what my husband and kids' lives would be if I stayed. I felt an overwhelming surge of love and compassion for them and decided that I had to return to make their lives better. As soon as I made the choice, the silver thread snapped me back through the tunnel the same way I had arrived. When I hit my body, it was like hitting a brick wall while running. I knew I was back in, but then it got scary as I realized I couldn't hear, see, or feel anything. I then realized I wasn't breathing. I tried so hard thinking I have to get this thing, my body in parentheses, working again. It took so much effort. Then slowly the breaths came back. Nothing else would work. Then the sound came back. Then the light and vision. When I opened my eyes, the resuscitation team were all around me. The doctor looked surprised and freaked out saying, you gave us a bit of scare. I realized <laughs> I was, I realized I had sticky pads on my chest and machines were beeping. I had basically died and had a jump start second chance. On coming back to myself properly, I remembered there were other things I experienced on the other side, like seeing an important man in a white robe, but wasn't sure who he was. I thought it was St. Peter as he was kind of the person in charge of the gateway. Also, there were other people, and I think animals, and I saw other things from this world, but I wasn't allowed to remember everything. Anyway, 
I came back with a commitment to love and serve. So that's my little story. What yeah. the fuck? How'd she die? The te- via tetanus? What? She didn't. She didn't explain why she died from a tetanus shot. I'm glad you asked. It was a very weird reaction that some people have when they have a deep muscle injury. Apparently, because my body took the deep muscle injection to be an inner injury and my adrenaline levels were high because of the dogfight, etc., my body was primed for a primitive physiological response to stop bleeding from the injury that was perceived by my body. So it shut me down by <gasps> fainting. But as I already had low blood pressure, it went a bit too far or something and I dropped out of existence Whoa. apparently. No proper explanation was given to me at the time, but I've done some research to try to figure out what happened and it seems this is a thing, albeit pretty uncommon. But to be honest, I still don't exactly know why or what happened. I've had a major migraine event in more recent years, which knocked me down. And I do wonder if there may be some connection. Oh, interesting. But no. Could uh, be. So I think when she says knocked down, I mean, like knocked out of life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> knocked I guess. Stayed. Um, I mean, it what? sounds like they had pads on her. They were resuscitating her. They obviously were concerned she was like not alive and What's- bringing her back. Really fascinating about her story, because we've talked about many a near-death experience, mostly from a you, but we hear all sorts of things about, you know, some positive, some negative, all over the map. Hers is pretty textbook, like Christian, St. Peter in white robes, there's an archway, here's a golden city, green fields abound, filled with love. It's really interesting and kind of um, plays on that whole idea of the afterlife is just what you believe it is in your mind. Yeah, but even with that, there are some recurring themes that we see, I think, throughout them is that one that that sound, the noise that sounds like mm. voices, but no one can really pin down. And then Having the, a guide. Uh-huh, sure. A guide, and then mm-hmm. they're communicating through t- telepathy, Yeah, right? Be given a choice to return or not. True. This is the first that I was... I've, I've seen, I think, that someone actually saw how their loved one's lives would play out without them in it. Yes. Which I thought was really interesting. So she saw what their life would be without her and decided to go back, which is yeah. wild. It, it kind of goes against the whole Christian thing of like, everything happens for a reason of like, your your life is predestined. You can't make any changes because it's already destined to be what it's supposed to be. Like, no. We That's can make true. some fucking choices. But maybe that was the choice she was going to make all along. <gasps> it. Uh. Wah, 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 wah. I wonder if it's circumstantial too. Like in that particular instance, it was like her health can be mended or not mended. Like yes. this is a choice. In other cases, it's like you're squished in a rolling machine accident like yeah. there's no coming back from this. like the guillotine or something they're like <laughs> right yeah, your head your so head's tired. gone <laughs> yeah no, no choice no choice yeah no choice. i don't know i think it also reminded me of mitch getting bit by hobo cat and yes. what it could have what could have happened so close so, so close, close to, to death. being mitch's experience as well and yeah. it also again makes me want to drink some ayahuasca and do some DMT. every <laughs> single one of these i think every time you hear Alyssa tell a past life or a, a re a, what the fuck is this a near-death experience story it's because she's like all right some of next that. time we're in washington we're going up to the forest we're gonna pop a tent we're going to take some ayahuasca and then vomit a lot because I hear that happens. Uh, yeah. And I then think it's maybe really see unpleasant. Jesus. I don't know. Who knows? Anything can I happen. have no idea. There is a place. I think it's on the south side of Rain- Rainier. It's actually in between us. And like you go there and because I do think someone needs to like take care of you a little bit. I would not mind someone taking care of me. Yeah, I don't know about perfect stranger, but yes, yeah, that's the idea. And then they they guide you kind of through the experience, and it's legal there because it's Ooh. like medicinal. What is the okay. other thing I'm thinking? Of? It's MDMA, no DMT. That's it. DMT is the street 
Alaska, you are so asking the wrong person. I don't know at all. Like I know I do know, obviously, but DMT, I'm not sure how you get that or take that. And I wouldn't take anything these days because of like the fentanyl stuff. That's like scares me. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. get that. I don't, I'm not going to. Yeah. No, I need someone to be like, this is the absolute lowest, safest dose. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Give me and the ca- you can have brunch tomorrow. <laughs> go and bite the cactus in the desert. Suck the juices with my uh-huh. bare teeth. Okay. And that's a good way to make sure you're not just going to take fentanyl, I think. You might <laughs> die <laughs> depending what? on the cactus. What kind of party is this? I, you know, okay. it's mine. Okay, Brett. <laughs> Welcome cactuses. to my world. You come visit me. I call the shots. We'll do All it. Right. All right. Deal. Fine. Okay, tell me another story, please. I have a story for you. This story is from Alice. She says, when I was eight years old, and my cousin was nine. We went for a vacation in my mom's province. I want to say there was talk of this possibly being Ireland, but don't quote me on that. Okay, back to the story. It was like an island with a limited amount of people living in that area. So basically, you see a lot of trees. Oh, so maybe not Ireland. Back to the story. <laughs> it was I, I can't tell if you're telling the story or commenting. <laughs> doing some commentary i can't tell what <laughs> is brit and what is the story i oh it's because i don't have my irish accent from oh. this possibility that it's a forested area of ireland i don't ireland. do they have provinces in ireland i feel like that's a oh. french or canadian thing okay might be canada hey it's canada they have a lot of trees they do have a lot, a lot of trees, of trees eh, in canada yeah It was dusk when me and my cousin decided to roam around by ourselves. We were walking in the woods not far away from our house when we saw an old man holding a kid. The old man looked like a farmer or worker from the island. The kid was younger than me, maybe about two or three years old. The old man holding the kid walked towards me and my cousin. Then he asked us if we could hold his grandson for a while because he was going to go buy a drink for the both of them. As innocent kids, we said, yes. My cousin decided to hold the kid's hand since he was older. We tried asking the kid questions, but he wouldn't talk and just would nod at any questions we asked. So we thought that he was just shy. It was starting to get dark, but the old man never came back. And not long after that, our grandma came to us and asked us what we were doing in the woods at 6 p.m., My cousin explained to our grandma that he was holding this kid's hand because an old man asked us to look after him. This is where it gets creepy. Our grandmother laughed and said, (laughs) what kid? She told us that it was just our imagination, but we could still see the kid (gasps) holding my cousin's hand. Yet only the two of us could see him. The old man never came back. And up until now, my cousin claims that the kid is still with him, holding his hand from time to time. My cousin is now 18 years old. Oh, God. Oh, and the podcast. That was beautiful. Just shut it down. Holy shit. So perfect. I love it. I don't care if it's Canada or Ireland, France, wherever it happened. <laughs> that is creepy, crazy, but like the ultimate child abandonment story. Yeah, because then what are you going to do? Let go of the kid's hand and leave him in the woods? Like you got so right? that you had to take him home? Yeah. It- what? <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. And then you just have to think about this teenager with this kid still around. Like, it's incredible. It's incredible. I wonder if the old man was real. Okay. Okay. Me. Okay. And back when the old man was a boy, he was in that very (laughs) forest. And there was this old man with a kid who's like, like, oh, they could see me and they could see it. You know, they're like, here, hold his hand. So Uh he had the kid. He had to take care of the kid his whole life until he could find another Uh someone to pass the kid to. Just got to go get us a drink. Uh Uh-huh. Quote, unquote, drink. Yes, yes, we're thirsty. So thirsty. Yeah. That wasn't honest. That wasn't an honest, uh, he needed to get rid of that kid. 
Oh my gosh. And nothing bad though. Nothing like it didn't sound bad necessarily. No, the kid was just no. quiet. Yeah. The kid, I'm, and I wonder, him. I'm so curious now, like, is the kid still quiet? Does the kid still just like yeah. nod to answers? Does he do anything weird? You just have to ignore him for that whole, your whole life. I and know. He's not there. I like, wonder if what the cousin... if you're like on a date, like, is the kid there? And he's like, Reaching up, like all sad, oh, wanting like, to hold, hold your hand. Hold my hand, please. Reaching out, and then oh you have to God. like pretend not to. <sighs> I can deal with that kind of creepy. I think. I think. Please, nobody give me a, a <laughs> imaginary child. Ghost I just, child. I don't want it. Nope. Seeing anyone in the middle of the woods would creep me out immediately. I've lied. I uh, don't. <laughs> Let's just back up to the oh, beginning. I know, yeah, I lied. I'd been out immediately. I, at a grocery store recently, had a guy um, be like, excuse me, miss, miss, am I bleeding? And I was like, what? And I looked at the guy. <laughs> He's like, am I bleeding? And he holds his head up like, no, you're not bleeding. But like your nose looks red. I'm pretty sure he just got punched right in the face and wasn't sure if he was bleeding. Pick up line. Not the same thing. I would have rather someone give me a ghost kid than wonder what the hell that was going to happen next. So I was like, what? No, you oh, don't well, want I a don't. ghost kid. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, been a better story though okay, anyway listeners i have a challenge for all of you but it's a fun one if you have a living relative old or young sit them down and say listen do you have a good story for me because i am so ready it can be paranormal or it can be just be strange coincidental we want you to gather that story and then share it with us in our hot box. Which is skeletalespodcast at gmail.com. You can also call the hotline and leave the story in our hotline. hotline. <laughs> Tell it with words Three out zero loud. Two. <laughs> Three zero two six eight nine dead. 302-689-3323. We are on all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Please go check out our YouTube. We're airing, posting unseen um, content over there. While you're over there, subscribe, please, because it really helps. And I've got a free t-shirt just like ready to go into the hands of somebody once we reach 100 subscribers. Yes. So do that. Also, please, someone go leave us a review somewhere, a review. Um, and if you do leave us a review, let us know where it is, because there's several places now. I guess you can leave them. Angie's uh, list. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK. <laughs> yeah, sure. We've got We've got 10 stars over on Spotify. That's right. 10 stars? I thought it only went to five. We broke well, the scales. You know what? We over break there. records over here at Skeletales. We also have a merch shop, skeletalespodcast.etsy, where we've got haunted shit, spooky shit, funny shit. That's not really shit. It's really cool. <laughs> Rad stuff. Rad stuff. One more thing, Brett. Yes. What is it? Haunt you later. Hot y'all later. Good, Good night. night.